Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be unboxing some dishes that I recently bought online, and I'm also going to show you how I made a few of the items on the shelf, and we're going to be decorating this hutch together. This hutch is uh, a free tutorial here on my YouTube channel and also on my blog. If you're interested in making the hutch itself, the link is found in the iCard and also in the description box below. So in the next clip, I'm going to show you the unboxing. This one was only $9, and it was free shipping, and there's 15 pieces in the set. There's the cups, plates, saucers, teapot, and sugar and cream. And yeah, free shipping and under $9. And then I bought some silverware as well, and that was under $3 in free shipping. So I'm going to be unboxing both of those. And then I'm going to show you how I made the brass candle holders. I'll talk a little bit about my picture frame and where the doily came from how I put the letters together. More information about the dishes, the silverware, and some of the things I made on the shelves can also be found on the blog post and the link to the blog post is in the iCard and also in the description box below. If you're not interested in watching the unboxing, I'll put some timestamps in the description box below so you can skip ahead to the parts that you want to see. Alright, I'll start with the bigger one first. Oh, it's so sweet. Such a tiny little package. <laughs> mm. Oh, they feel like metal. Sounds like metal in there. I got four of each. And you can see I got an extra spoon. So somebody made a mistake in the packaging, which is fine by me. I'll take an extra spoon. So I went back to the original listing to check out the material used, and it is stainless steel. Now I thought that was just the color that they were referring to because you could choose from steel or gold, and I chose these ones. So I'm quite happy with that. Solid little pieces. Make sure that you check out all the different listings for silverware. Uh, I've seen them go as high as $15 for the 12-piece set. And I got mine for under three with free shipping. Again, more information in the blog post. So you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on these things. Porcelain with a painted blue flower and gold trim. I thought it would be interesting to see how these fit in here. And everything fits except for this taller teapot thing. It fits under here and this up here. But it won't fit on the other shelves. But the plates fit good. Actually, these ones fit across just perfectly. And I did not have these before I built this little hutch, so I lucked out there. So all of these pieces here are being held in by a little bit of this stuff here. And I found this in a thrift store, but I actually looked online just now, and you can buy it on Amazon. It's for the bottom of candles. And you can wash it off with hot soapy water, and it's like a wax, like a sticky wax. And I use a little bit on the bottom of my dishes here. I just put the piece in there. And I used to have this in here already, and I, did, I wanted to see what it looked like when I took it off. And it had a little bit of that uh, waxy stuff on there, and I just pushed it off with my finger, and it came right off. And then that just holds it in place without permanently gluing it down. All right, guys, let's talk about my little photo frame and doily. The doily is a cutout from a piece of lace trim, actually. I found the lace trim in a thrift store. I just cut out that little shape in there. And you can find all sorts of different trims, different colors, different shapes and decorations on them. These are nice because they're thin and not too bulky, and you can put pictures and stuff on them. So my picture frame was actually a locket, and I got this in a thrift store as well, $2.99 for the chain and all the trinkets. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm not good at resizing photos. I actually used two different things to get to the size that I needed here. Uh, first step, I used paint, and I reduced my original photo down to 50%. So that this is this photo here is 50% of the original size that I had. Once I had it down to this size, I was able to use Windows Gallery and print it off in wallet size. And I'll detail those steps in the blog post. You can also Google 
how to resize photos and it will tell you how to use Photoshop and how to use paint and all that to get the, the exact size that you need. I lucked out and I was able to do it with those two steps. But I ended up with these two sweet little pictures and you don't have to glue them in or anything because there's a little ridge that they just slide under. Now they don't stand up on their own because they're kind of oval shape and I could make a little stand for them but I didn't want to do that so I just dipped the bottom of them and I just put it right on here and that seems to be holding it up just fine. Next I'm going to show you how I made these little brass candle holders. I used a piece off of a cereal box, a pair of scissors of course, the back end of a pencil, one without the eraser, uh, not necessary but comes in handy, a binder clip, some sewing thread, you can also use dental floss, and for the candle itself I'm using treat sticks that I found at Walmart, they're called Candy Melts Treat Sticks. And I'm just going to cut a circle, you don't have to be exact, just think about how small the uh, candle holder would be in the 12, 112 scale or whatever scale you're going for. This is one inch ruler. It's a half an inch across. So I'm going to take my pencil. I'm just going to push it right in the middle and then push up from underneath around. Kind of shape it around that pencil. Okay, now I'm going to make the handle of the same cereal box. And I shaped the end of the handle just a little bit. Something like that. Popping in with an edit so you know that you can Google those uh, antique candle holders and it will show you all different sizes and shapes of handles. You don't have to do the exact same one that I'm doing. The reason why I chose a handle like this is so I can easily grab it myself. If I put a little tiny loop here like a lot of them have, it would have been a little bit more difficult to just pick up. So I guess it kind of looks like a little shovel. So I push it right on there and I'm pushed down. That's my finger now. And I'm going to push up at the where the handle meets the little circle. I'm going to push up from there. And kind of shape it that way. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more tacky glue on the top. Alright guys, you're going to have to forgive my fingers because now I have dry glue hanging off my fingers. So the original ring that I made on this little candle holder here, that little ring that goes around the candle itself, I originally made just a strip like this and then I made a, a small circle one that my stick would fit into and then I just laid it inside a bunch of glue and that worked for me it was a little bit annoying because I had to keep making sure that the end stayed closed so what I'm going to do for this one instead you can do it either way you want to do it I'm just going to wrap it around my stick here loosely don't want it too tight put glue on the very end of that And remember, uh, a bit loose. You don't want it too tight because then it'll be hard to get it off the stick. And then I'll put my clip on there to hold it closed. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Alright, that should be dry enough to work with now. So there's our ring. And now I want to cut the excess off, get it as close as I can to the ring, so I don't want to see anything sticking out. Okay, I'm just going to try my stick in there, make sure there fits perfect. Not too tight and not too loose, that's just right. And don't worry about it being too loose because we can uh, glue our stick inside once we get the ring glued to our little candle holder. So that's the next step. More glue. I'm going to put glue on that handle as well, kind of stiffen it up, and some underneath. I just covered the whole thing. Okay, and to just lay your 
circle inside and then let the glue dry. And I place the uh, where it joins towards the handle so we don't ever see that when we pick up the candle holder. So now it's ready to be painted. And I'm using a new paint. I just picked this up today. It's called a brushed metal and it's bronze. I was looking for brass but I couldn't find any. So this will do. I'll do a couple of coats. So once you have it painted, you sh you'll find that it's pretty stiff, especially if you put the glue on the handle like I did. It's actually pretty stiff. And if anything is bothering you around the edges, you can use your pliers, name those pliers, and straighten those out, uh, the edges I mean. So next we'll make some candles. And I'm using those sticks like I said. You can use anything. Uh, when I first started making miniatures years ago, I would actually use a real candle, melt it down, and dip dental floss or whatever I had in there and just make a real candle. You can Google how to make candles. So I'm going to leave this long for now. And the ends where I'm going to stick the wick into, I'm just going to take a little bit of sandpaper and I'm going to rough up the edges. Let's make the wick. You can use dental floss. I'm going to use regular thread and because it's so thin I'm going to double it over a couple of times. Okay, double it over once, twice, and that should do it. Now I have a little loop there. I'm going to twist it and I can put some glue on there just to keep it all together and then run it through my fingers and twisting at the same time. I'm just going to cut off that little fiber I saw at the end there. There's a little bit of a stray fiber. There. Okay, I'm going to use a pin to push this into the hole of my little stick. I just lay it across the hole and then I'm going to push it in with that stick and it takes a few tries. Which I've got it shoved in there now. I'm going to put a little bit of glue there and then just a few globs around the side. I'm going to let that dry. Okay, once it's dry enough, just trim up the end. I'll trim it up again. And I'll use my black sharpie to burn the end. And then I just rub it very lightly around the edges where I sandpapered. I just wet my finger and I'm just smudging that black around. Okay, once you have the look that you want, then you can just trim this up to the desired length of the candle. And we can stick our little candle in there. And if it's too loose, of course, you can glue it in. The book that sits on the top shelf is nothing spectacular. It's actually just a little segment out of a magazine spine that I cut out. I cut the whole spine out so I didn't have to glue anything to, together. And then over top of that I glued a piece of canvas from a real uh, book that I had that was falling apart and I saved the canvas for crafts. And the picture of my gnomes is just an image I printed off from Google using the same steps that I used to make my other little photo frame there to shrink it down. And then I glued on some cardstock on the back, roughed up the edges to make it look like it's worn out. My stack of letters is coffee stained paper that I cut into strips and folded them over into shapes of envelopes. Scribbled on the front with pen, added some colored paper for stamps, and then tied them all together. Alright my friends, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas in decorating your own little hutch. If you do make a hutch like this one or make any of the things on it, I'd sure love to see. You could post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you super soon.